Good afternoon to you. Mark out of HurricaneTrack.com here with your hurricane outlook and discussion. It is Friday, June 25th, 2021. The weekend is here. We are almost done with the month of June, 4th of July celebrations and all of that. Coming up, I'm already hearing the fireworks out in the distance at night for whatever reason, every year around here. Uh, I guess as I get older, I get less tolerant of that, at least when it's not 4th of July. Come on, people. Anyway, the tropics should be nice and quiet as we get through the weekend and into the first part of July. I don't see any big trouble coming, but there are a few areas to keep an eye on, even though we don't have a named storm in the Atlantic or certainly no hurricanes to deal with. There are a few areas to keep watch of that could bring some impacts even as tropical waves. So let's just start real quick reminding you about climatology. Normally the tropical Atlantic out here is quiet and it looks as that it's going to stay that way for the time being. Most of the activity this time of year is in the Gulf of Mexico on the Atlantic Basin side and the Eastern Pacific is usually dominant with way more development areas over the past 150 plus years. So, you know, June is typically quiet. Once we get into July, things start to pick up, but even July can be a quiet month. It's not until August, September, and October. I know most of you know this, just reminding you, it's usually not until then that we start to really see a noticeable increase in activity, and hopefully it'll remain that way this year. I'm sure we all have plenty to do before the hurricanes decide to show up, whenever that might be. Nevertheless, we do have stuff to keep an eye on. In the Atlantic, there's still Invest Area 95L. This one was interesting a couple of days ago, more so than it is now anyway, mainly because the old Euro there, the ECMWF, a very reliable global computer model, and many of its ensemble members, as you recall, were showing that this would go on to develop almost immediately south of the Cabo Verde Islands there, Cape Verde Islands, and it's you know still there the tropical wave energy is there but it's not developing the water temperatures are warm you know they're about 79 80 degrees or so there's some moisture there but it's mostly kind of stable out that way still early in the season and that word climatology is there for a reason you know that we do not see development out that far east this early for a reason it's just typically not favorable and I think that's going to be the case again. But it's still there. The tropical wave doesn't just go away. It's going to be there, that, that energy, the vorticity, the moisture, and the wind shift. All of that's going to move across the Atlantic, and we'll see where it ends up. You never know when it comes to life. And you got this entire long area of potential development. Um, that's not a forecast cone of any particular center feature. That's just the potential area where this could develop over the next several days roughly five days time and it could approach the islands and be a little bit more robust than the tropical wave that is moving through now which I will show you in just a moment so we'll watch that and see how it progresses and we'll take a closer look at it through some other analytical tools here coming up in just a moment in the meantime we do have tropical storm Enrique in the eastern Pacific and I wanted to show it to you on our tracking map this is on the hurricane track insider site a really really nice map that we've got and you can click on each of these uh, icons and they it gives you all the information that you need um, so as of 1 p.m. central time moving west northwest so it's still paralleling the coast the wind is up to 50 miles per hour and the pressure 1002 millibars and we have a nice headline that's pulled from the National Hurricane Center uh, public advisory and this is nice too because you can click on it and go right to the source you know we don't make this stuff up it comes from the National Hurricane Center we are just plotting it on this beautiful mapping system that our patron and all-around great guy from the UK Will Woodgate put together for us and you can see that it doesn't and, I, and this is why I really like this because you can zoom in and you know really get some detail here uh, in the in the web browser and see where it might impact and you know, see the cone of uncertainty over here most of the action will stay offshore. So areas like, uh, let me pick out Zewantaneo. There you go, made famous by the movie The Shawshank Redemption, where they ended up at the end of the movie on the Pacific shores there, uh, well off the coast of there. So uh, the center shouldn't bring any problems, but the rain bands from this might reach far enough over 
that you could get some heavier rain showers, some squally weather. And then you have the mountains. Again, I talk about this a lot. They come right down to the coast. So that orographic lift in the uh, terrain there could wring out some of that moisture, and you might see the potential for some localized flash flooding. But pulling back out a ways, you can see the bigger picture. Enrique uh, probably going to head up towards the cooler waters to the northwest. Again, too bad it's not going to move up into the Gulf of California and bring moisture to the desert southwest, maybe later on in the season. But right now, it does not look like it'll become a direct threat for landfall. But look, it is forecast to become a hurricane over the next few days. Each of these points here gives us that information, up to 90 miles per hour, and then eventually a Category 2. And you never know, it might even get stronger than that. And then it eventually weakens here over these cooler waters of the northeastern Pacific Ocean, well to the south of Cabo San Lucas. But even here, you might get some rain shower activity coming across. This is still more than five days away, so we will keep you posted on that. Looking at the satellite imagery, courtesy of Tropical Tidbits, you can tell it's kind of busy out there. There's the tropical wave headed towards the islands today. This is the very large one, 95L, south of the Cabo Verde Islands. Here we have Enrique, and there's a little feature right in here that we need to talk about as well. This is an upper level low. There's another large upper level low and cold core storm way up in the North Atlantic. And so it's a busy period, but just nothing concentrated and nothing to be too concerned with in the Atlantic. So let's take a look at what is out there. First, the very obvious curl and moisture plume here associated with 95L that came off of Africa moving west over the open Atlantic, some dry air getting pulled into it from Africa too. So it's not going to amount to too much. This tropical wave definitely right, I mean, I mean, you can clearly see it. It looks literally like a wave in the moisture field there, the total precipitable water channel here from the University of Wisconsin site. And as it's uh, moving west all through these islands here, that's the windwards and leewards, yes, you all might see some squally weather as this moves through you're used to it. I've talked about it the last couple of days, making you aware as this passes through eventually the U.S. British Virgin Islands and maybe up towards Puerto Rico. And then we'll see because this does represent energy and this whole thing's going to move into this direction over the next few days and you never know. I mean, they don't just go away. They might pop up either in the Atlantic, Caribbean, or maybe somewhere over the Eastern Pacific, if not in the Atlantic Basin. Now I want to draw your attention to this feature right here, passing through the Florida Straits. Another little impulse, a little concentrated area of energy uh, moving through the Florida Straits and through and close to the Yucatan Channel. If we go back to the satellite animation, that's it right in there. Just a weak area of convergence. There's a little bit of vorticity uh, or spin to it. If we look at the vorticity channel here, I'll zoom in and show you. There it is, right down in here. Not much to write home about, but it is going to make its way up towards the Texas coast, coming around this big, sprawling Bermuda High. I'll show you that on the model in just a moment on the GFS. Very easy to pick out. Another area of vorticity right here. That's the one entering the islands. And then this is 95L. So a lot of energy out there, just nothing coming together. The Atlantic, not quite ready to go. You know, it's just the way it is. And again, that's a good thing because we know how it's going to get more than likely come August and September. Over in the Eastern Pacific, there is Enrique, but then you got this little sort of weekend guest, whatever you want to call it, the relative that won't leave, right? That extra piece of energy to the west of Enrique that's inhibiting this from really getting going. If, if that other piece of competing vorticity was not there, uh, I think Enrique could potentially rapidly intensify just interesting how that works out. Nature competes against itself sometimes. All right, so looking at the modeling, where are our players that I want you to keep an eye on? One of them is right here. That's the tropical wave energy moving through the Lesser Antilles. And then you got this other little bump right here, literally a bump in the height field and some energy down there, the vorticity embedded in the overall flow of this big sprawling Bermuda High sitting out over the Western Atlantic. So as I put this into motion, we'll leave this up, my telestration, just for a minute. And you can see how these features move along. The system 
in the Yucatan Channel, Southern Gulf, kind of amplifies a little bit by about 60 to 72 hours coming into Texas there. Let's back it up to the start. So here we are at the beginning, go forward again. Yeah, you see that? So maybe uh, a little bit of increased shower activity and squally weather as that moves on shore. The other system ends up over here, coming out of my box that I drew without much fanfare. So really nothing to worry about. We can continue this on day three, day four, and to day five. Nope, nothing really going on, just sprawling summertime, high pressure, covering a good deal of the western Atlantic Basin here. Deep southeasterly flow, going to be very muggy and, you know, kind of normal, not really crazy hot. That's going to be in the Pacific Northwest. <laughs> You've been hearing about that. Seattle and points all around there in the Northwest, in Oregon and Washington, possibly setting all-time record highs. But that's a story for another day. Uh, we're focused on the tropics right now. So speaking of that, let's take a look at the Pacific. And I just think this is interesting with Enrique right there, very easy to spot. And then that little thing, that hanging around, you know, other weekend guests, wherever you want to call it, the pest. Uh, and they share the same ocean over here, and they are competing for the same energy, the same upward motion, whatever. And I just think it's interesting, if this wasn't there, I think Enrique would really start to take off. But nevertheless, let's put this into motion. See what the GFS resolves in terms of the forecast over the next day or two. Kind of milling around down there. Finally, by about 54 hours, 48 to 50 hours or so, that other piece of energy dissipates. You see that? It goes away. And then Enrique says, all right, I ate you for lunch or breakfast or whatever. And... Off it goes. Enrique starts to get stronger. Kind of tries to get close to the coast there of Mexico and then reaches those cooler waters uh, south of Cabo San Lucas by about day five and starts to dissipate. This will just be a low cloud remnant with showers and maybe a few breezes. And that is about it. So no worries if you're down there along the Baja trying to enjoy some rest and relaxation. All right, that's it. Nice and quiet weekend overall coming up. So that's a good thing. And that's it for me. I'm done. Uh, I will be back over the weekend, though, to update you on things each afternoon. And, of course, every morning I've got my podcast, the audio podcast, Hurricane Season, the podcast, on Apple, Google, Spotify, hosted by Anchor. Check that out. Subscribe to it uh, wherever you get your podcast, and you get a little briefing every morning. And then I'll be back in the afternoons with the Hurricane Outlook and Discussion here on YouTube. It's great to have you. Thanks for tuning in. I am Mark Suddeth. Have a great weekend. I'll talk to you throughout the weekend, uh, and you know we'll see what happens. I think it's going to be nice and quiet, like I said, but we'll check in from time to time between now and Monday.